Hi, I'm Ed Phillips from Business YouTube Video and Business Today is coming right up. It's Business Today. Business YouTube Video is who we are and Jen Balick is who she is. She's with Taste of AZ and um, Jen has blown up basically. Uh, she started a business. This is an entrepreneurial woman that has uh, maybe got a tiger by the tail. Tell us about Taste of AZ and how you thought of that idea. Yeah, so back in about January, I was working a nine to five job um, with the Arizona Cardinals and I was that person who was working nine to five. I would go home, I would eat, I would sleep, go back and do the same thing the next day. And so I never really did anything for myself. And so about a January, New Year's, of course, New Year, New Me, I decided to start a food page because I've always had like a passion for food. And so I created Taste of AZ and then fast forward to March, I was furloughed from my job like most people in America. And I just kind of took that and ran with it and started making videos for Taste of AZ. I would go out to restaurants, help promote them, and then it just kind of blew up from there. Um, went from about 1,000 followers on Instagram to now I'm over 5,000 within not even a year yet. Um, and then TikTok was the beast that really grew my channel. And that went from, I think I had 800 followers and now I'm almost at 60,000. So it's been a crazy journey. <laughs> that, that's wild. So it, it sounds to me like you've almost built a marketing company. Is that fairly accurate? And tell us about your, your ideal customer. Who would that be that could, could uh, work with you? Yeah, so I had no experience in marketing really per se. Um, I did a lot of like production, camera work. I went to school for journalism. So I kind of knew the basis of content mm -hmm. creation, social media. Um, but then I just kind of took it to the next level. I started building like graphics on my own, learning how to do it. Um, and my clients are really restaurant owners, marketers. So I do have to be very specific in the marketing game and how we portray their restaurant, their brand, um, sure. and help grow their business. Well, you, you picked, uh, I think the only way to put this, Jen, is you picked a hell of a year to do this, yeah. <laughs> especially in the category of restaurants. Cause they have just been, I just read an article that said the 10,000 10,000 restaurants have closed probably to never be open again, just here in Arizona. And so by working with them, tell us, a step us through, you don't have to mention a name if you don't want to, because we believe you, but step us through a success story that you've had, somebody that maybe was kind of a, on, the, on the rocks and you helped out. Yeah, so there's been a couple, when I first started, a lot of my videos would go viral, which when they go viral, you're really getting a big clientele to come in at least like the next day, the next two days, the next week. And so one of them was called morning kick and it's a breakfast burrito joint. And, um, I think it's considered Gilbert. And so they had like a pretty decent following, but once we posted that video of them making their famous breakfast burrito, she told me the next day they grew 25% in sales. And so to grow 25% in sales, when you've been struggling to oh. leave bring in people is such Amazing. a deal. Yeah. So that was probably one of the bigger ones that we helped out. That, that, uh, that's a, a great success story. And I, I have uh, actually had a restaurant at one time. And so I know the difficulties that are involved. It is a tough business on its best mm -hmm. day. And um, in, in my case, I needed to have 100 people come through that door and spend five bucks a piece. It was a coffee shop to just make my expenses. Well, getting a hundred people to walk through a, a door or come through a drive through in a day may sound easy on paper, but it's an unbelievable task seven days a week, uh, 365 days a year. That, that is a tall order. So I, I have, you know, it, it, my heart goes out to the restaurants that have had it so difficult. And of course, government hasn't helped with clamping down here and clamping down there. And, and um, actually I know slightly the, the head of the Arizona restaurant association, and he, he says, you know, these are smart people. These people will figure something out that's totally safe for their clients. But just to shut everything down has been basically disastrous in, in many sectors. So how do you, as Jen, it sounds like I've got the idea, but, but step me through. So does someone then hire you to 
help them with their restaurant? Is that how that works? Yeah. So when I first started, it was more just me going on my own um, to these restaurants and then they would kind of blow up and more and more restaurants would find out or they'd see the video go viral or the restaurant owner would tell somebody else like, hey, our sales went up 25 percent. So that's when the traction started building with other restaurants. And I was constantly being reached out to um, then from PR companies reaching out um, and then just so many places wanting my attention, even like big companies like Habit Burger wanted me to do like a small commercial on my TikTok page. So nice. it's really grown um, with restaurants and just word of mouth. So yeah, they hire me to come in. We'll make like a little video um, depending on what they want. It's not per se like what I tell them to do. So if they have a certain dish they want to showcase, if there's certain popular items they're not selling much of and they want to sell those, um, I know a lot of my followers love to see their food being made. <laughs> and so <laughs> anything, where you, yeah, anything where you can showcase like a burrito or a burger flip or some wings being tossed in some sauce, like people yeah. love to see that. Um, and I've noticed like the healthy food doesn't do as well as like the <laughs> like over the top triple patty burgers and things like that so yeah baby <laughs> yeah. yeah oh let's see healthy food doesn't do well i mean you know that part of that, but see that's part of i think going out to eat is it's something first of all that you can't really make easily at home necessarily right. and something that is more of a comfort food going out to eat healthy is great and if that's your deal that's fine it's not a criticism but it's it's Habit Burger is a good, you know, remember there was a place in town a while back called Heart Attack Burger. Oh, and yeah. And it was at 44th and Thomas. And you'd go in there and there was a hamburger about the size of a, of a Buick, you know, and um, that but that was their deal. You said something key about people liking to see it made. And I think back to my roots in Illinois, when there is a, a chain of burger joints called Steak and Shake. You may or may not have heard of them. They were a regional at the time. And their tagline was in sight, it must be right. So basically you would go in the restaurant. That was part of the deal years ago is you could see them making the burger. And it's like, well, if I can see it, it must be okay. And yeah. it was it's interesting, the visuals. And that's what I, I really like about what you're doing is you're uh, stepping people through the visuals so that they know that uh, exactly what's going on. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you this, though. And uh, actually, I'm going to ask you that. We're, we're going to uh, continue with this conversation with Jen Valick when we come back. Stay with us. Start your day the Hempful way. Hempful Farms is a family-owned and operated hemp business with a full range of products to offer you, your family, and your furry friends. We believe in making a natural alternative product affordable to everyone. All of our organic products are third-party tested and a great alternative to many pharmaceuticals. Visit us online or any of our retail stores to learn more. Start your day the Hempful way. Hempful Farms. Ed Phillips back with Jen Ballack, and I'm with Business YouTube Video, and this is Business Today. Jen, uh, uh, this is a little more of a difficult question, and I give all my guests an option to say, I don't think I want to talk about that, but have you found a restaurant that, that wanted you to help them? And then you saw what they were doing and you said, mm, you don't have to mention names, but I don't think so. Don't think we can do that. Have you, have you encountered that yet? Or is it, has it been a tier of restaurants that really just need some help and they're good folks in terms of what they deliver? Yeah, I think I've been lucky enough that everyone I've come in contact has been very sweet, very kind, supportive. And I think it's really about this time in restaurants lives. So with the pandemic, with them struggling, I think they're willing to do anything and everything to bring in any amount of guests um, into their restaurants. So I will say I've been in some restaurants where the kitchen's not the cleanest, yeah. um, but I, I still go about the process without showing much of what is around. Cause I don't want to portray them in like a bad light of, hey, this is not a clean necessary area. But um, yeah, I've been really lucky to deal with a lot of really great people. You know, it, it's interesting though, of those 10,000 restaurants that we spoke of that have gone out of business, that was probably a lot of those folks are just like, you know, probably hitting the road now because they 
chances are weren't going to make it anyway. And with, with the inspections that go on at restaurants, some restaurants can maybe get by with a few things for a while, but the just about every restaurateur I've ever met absolutely didn't want to, wanted to make sure nobody got sick under any circumstances because if they get sick, they're not coming back under any circumstances whatsoever. But have you found that uh, a lot of the restaurants though are in the um, analog world and you've kind of pulled them into the digital world a little bit? Has that been part of what you do? Yeah, a lot of them. So it's, kind of difficult because when I want to do like a food truck, a lot of food trucks aren't per se like on social media or aren't active on social media. So it's hard mm -hmm. for some of my followers to see exactly where they're going to be located. Um, a lot of the restaurants I think are still like not into the social media game. There are some that are very like successful. Um, I think those are the ones that usually hire somebody in to take care of it. Uh, whereas I found the ones that do it themselves aren't as successful and don't mm -hmm. constantly post, which you kind of have to constantly post to be engaged with your following and kind of show them um, what dishes are constantly being made. So, Well, there, there's a good book uh, called Tribes where basically that's what a lot of these restaurants are doing with your help is, is building a tribe of people that regularly come to that restaurant. There's nothing a restaurateur loves more than a regular. Um, I know when I have my coffee shop, I love the people that came in seven days a week and bought a $5 cup of coffee. I mean, you know, that's those are the kind of people you really like. Mm -hmm. That's that's really a, a big part of the success. So uh, Taste of AZ is Jen's business. And uh, Jen Palak is my guest today. We're going to have her step through exactly how someone would contact her and uh, exactly what you would ask that person. So maybe we can funnel some folks that, that might be interested in what you do for them. So talk, step us through that if you would. Yeah, so on our website, jenballick.com, you can contact us, kind of tell us what you're looking for, for us to come out. If you want Instagram posts, TikToks, um, we're now starting to do social media management. Um, so there's different things. We also have broadcast YouTube shows through a production company. So if you guys are interested in any of that, you can contact my agent at agent at um, or also go on jenballick.com and you'll see the form to fill out. You'll see our services um, and then you can see some examples of some photos I've taken or even check out my um, social media channels. So. I, I think that's what a lot of restaurants have struggled with, Jen, is that the visuals are really important. Mm -hmm. uh, you, can, you can verbalize things a lot. But if you can paint a picture with with pictures and with uh, videos and things like that, it makes a huge difference. And believe it or not, and this is true confessions, I probably shouldn't tell you this. I've actually done a couple of cooking videos because I found that there are certain things that you can make at home that are, are you would always buy out. And one of them is prime rib. And here's the secret. Prime rib is not that tough. Mm -hmm. But you've got to follow a few rules. If you follow those rules, you're going to take that seventy or hundred dollar piece of meat, and it's yeah. not going to turn into a cinder. It's going to turn out great. Yeah. So there are <laughs> that you can do at home, Jen. You're it's lovely. Is there anything else that you'd like to add to tell us about your business today? No, just contact me. I'm I'm a nice person. I'm fun to work with, um, and I hope I can help some future businesses in the future and get you guys some more guests to come in. I have a very very supportive following fan base that is willing to listen to anything I say, any suggestions. So, yeah. Perfect. Well, as you probably have figured out, I, having been in the business, I have a fondness for the entire restaurant sector and restaurant tours. So as I would say, come on down, we'd be happy to talk with you here. And yeah. uh, on business YouTube video, our show is That's Business Today. I'm Ed Phillips. Thank you so much for being with us. And Jen, thank you for joining us. From, Taste of AZ, Ed Phillips, and that's business today.